what is going on there guys welcome back to the video from dracon and today we talk about this awesome pre-painted miniature that i think might have a unique twist but we'll get there um this is loath the spider queen that's right we're not just dealing with a demon lord such as how orcus which i had reviewed in the past video guys ch check him out or Yanogu before the one released in stores, I printed one and painted up, and I kind of like mine better than how mine printed out than the one they actually sold in stores. Has more of the uncanny valley effect. Like, it looks right, but it looks so demonically off. If you guys want to check that out, go to my, uh, I don't know if I made a YouTube video on it. I know he was in a video of mine in the past. I think I was reviewing the Anacubic Photon. Yeah, I think. And I also did put them on Twitter, so guys do check out my Twitter, my Discord, where I post these miniatures, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, um, let's get to the video and let my sword of opening. It's burning in the hand. It wants to release this demon lord. Sorry, the other part I forgot to mention. This isn't just a demon lord. It's an actual god. And not just any god. The queen of the elven gods. Because she was the, month, the wife to the great patriarch of the elven gods. Until she was tricked for her betrayal and sent down and tormented and turned into this spidery form. Let's open up and take a look at her new status. Okay, so let's talk about Loth the Spider Queen. And here she is in all of her pre-painted and miniaturized glory. Now, let's first talk about this. This is a very... Now, normally I do critique on the painters of the... Wiz Kids pre painted line, but this one actually turned out pretty good. I love the purple, sort of spiked legs of hers, those purple endings. I like the purple spots on her back there. She kind of looks like almost like a wolf spider, which it kind of makes sense. And before I say why, that I'll get to that later, but let me look at her. She looks quite like even her body. She doesn't look ugly. She has actually a beauteous bit of her to her. I love the small spiders crawling on her, like her spidery brood or just her spider minions. I love how she has multiple arms, even though she already has the rest of the spider body, including the fangs up front. It's just, it looks so unique. And I actually love, too, they didn't mess up her flight base by giving her a small peg. They gave her a big one, and she is, I believe, sitting on a gargantuan base. Let me check one second. Uh, yes, she is actually on a gargantuan base. So as of this moment, Loth is a gargantuan creature. There, I wanted to check to make sure there wasn't one of those secondary huge rings inside. I couldn't see one. Therefore, this is truly meant to be her. Now, this is actually good because even though, yes, she doesn't look the same size as Orcus... There's one thing that Orcus has, or sorry, one thing Orcus is lost. Sorry, lost, not missing. Well, you know, he's missing it, but he lost it. So, and that is true divinity. We're not talking about a demon lord that rules over the spidery webbed realm of the de of the abyss. No, we're talking about the dark elf god. The one who rules them by fear and power. And honestly, in my opinion, she's probably more... I'd rather fight Demogorgon than her because she's a god. And not just a weak god. Loth is a high-ranking god. She's not a low-level god. She is powerful. I mean... It's a lucky thing her coup did not work against her elven lord husband, or else the elves would be probably all worshipping to her. The dark elves would be on top of the pecking order, and uh, who knows how the world would have changed. Loath with her cruel, sadistic nature that she was developing probably would have gotten worse, turning the elves into a very cruel race to other races. Not that they're not already kind of snobbish, but, well, that's elves. But I love the effect of, like, her cloak. It looks really unique. It doesn't take away from her spider body. Now, yes, you could print a, a miniature like this if you really wanted to, but to get that loath body there perfect and all that stuff, you'd have to actually, like, it would take a lot of work, and I'm actually glad I got this miniature. Now, this miniature was $50, but we got to talk about, I got it for sale at around 44 That's not a bad sale, a little bit of price off, but in the end, we're getting a true gargantuan mini, her legs are in. They could go out way farther and lift her higher, so she would be probably bigger if, you know, they weren't trying to do that size constraining that they always do. And there's just one more awesome thing about this. This is Loth. We're not just getting a demon lord out of nowhere for no reason. We're getting a demon lord slash god who, unlike Orcus, has not lost her divinity and has not lost power. As a matter of fact, she's at the point where if your group fought her, she would have to choose to take damage. 
she would otherwise just look at you and say, yo, what are you doing down there attacking my leg? I don't even, you're not even hurting me. You know that, right? And they'd be like, oh, snap. We forgot. This isn't just a demon lord. This is a god. And if I remember correctly, I think she's intermediate to greater deity. Somewhere in that range. I can't remember the exact ranking she has of why she's so great and powerful. But guys, she is. And she will always be that great and powerful. No matter how much time goes on, Loth will always be in charge. Now, Loth, in my opinion, is a definite heavy hitter in the hell or in the abyssal hierarchy. Because not only is she a god, but she is a demon lord and a powerful one at that. I mean, she probably rules over the Glabrezus as many of her min her drow minions try to reproduce with them to create Dragoleths. Or Dragoloth. Yeah, I think so. I think I said it right. If I'm saying it wrong, my bad, comment down below. Sometimes it happens. But now let's do a lovely thought. Now the box it came in was pretty beat up, as you saw. It was kind of beat up. Kind of a shame. I wish the box was a little bit bigger and had more of um, a plastic insert in there to keep her safe. Luckily, as you can see, mine did not show up with any damage or lost parts. Thank goodness. When I saw the boxes that beat up I pulled out, I was concerned. But luckily, when I pulled it out here and said it in the video with you guys, it was luckily perfect. I was shocked beyond belief. I've seen actually some videos when I, or other pictures of people who got theirs and there's had broken legs. Loth was snapped off and her base was broken. Like I was like, oh God, that could have been mine. So be cautious. If you buy from a store, you're getting the advantage of it's already in the store and it's hopefully good to sell and good to you know buy. You're not buying something broken and damaged. Now let's go over the size. I do wish she was a little thicker in all the body parts, everything a little bigger. Just because she is gargantuan, I want her to make a little more use of that space. Yeah, like I said, she is in a confided position because her legs are pointed in. Like, you know, she's got her legs close to her body, not out to raise her up for an authoritative stance. But overall, this is Lothar talking about. She is sneaky, crafty, and uh, man, I gotta say, for a spider lady, pretty cool looking. I mean, I could see why she's not just respected by some and also feared by others, but some respect her and find her beautiful. Her paint job looks good. This is one of the best paint jobs I've seen a pre-painted miniature come for a while. And it's always the premium ones that can do it. Sometimes you get it with the smaller ones like the, uh, the blind packs, but this one really just, it nailed it. It looks good. I like the spots. If there was anything I would touch up, not much. I would leave it the way it is. It looks great. Now I don't have to print one, which is awesome. I'm not going to waste the hours waiting for it to print, then assemble it, and then uh, base it and all that stuff. This is just pre-done for me. So nice. Like I said, I may have 3D printers, but I'm not going to immediately give up on buying miniatures, especially when they can come looking like this good. Now, price-wise, whiz kids, come on. Wizards, lower the price a little bit. I think this thing being more around like a $40 range is better than 50. I'm not saying she's not worth it, but you know, make her more affordable because people would love, because this is going to go on my shelf. She's a display mini. This is going on my shelf next to the other speed display because she's awesome. This is a good mini, but let's now get her like set up with some other miniatures for size comparison. So you see what we're looking at. So here we have Loth next to my uh, miniature I painted, the Reaper Bones Dagon, who is sitting on his large situational i mean he'd be gargantuan this size he'd be another gargantuan monster and here she is next to him and i gotta say she looks pretty cool next to him but though dagon is bigger remember this loth is a true god she's reached divinity like true divinity she could still probably smite down this old obreth and take him out and say hmm demon lord of old you are nothing next to the power of the queen of the spiders and before you realize, like I said earlier, Wolf Spider, I do believe Loth might have had her design based on the Wolf Spider, the terrifying being who worked beside the original Lady of Chaos, Queen of Chaos, when she went to war for, you know, all chaos and evil. Man, that's like old D&D lore there. <laughs> Whew. But let's uh, compare her to something else. Let's compare her to a more modern day demon lord. So modern being a relative term in the sense of like maybe, uh, you know, the fact of like lore of history. Here is her next to the demon lord Yanogu I printed. Now, granted, I want him to be big and bulky because this is probably Yanogu when he's at his most pristine, his most powerful. 
back in my opinion this might be you know back when he took over the giants or j- bullied his way into the gigantic the giants pantheon and you know and when he captured the uh lord of the knolls and stuff back when he was you know a real threat i mean yes yeah, so you get to see him in his glory with the base that i painted sorry i'm just turning a little bit just so you can take a look at his base because i mean i did a lot of work on that giving him like bloody corpses and stuff but, you know, Loth in the end would still probably defeat this guy. And her elegance would probably ensnare him to be like, oh, man, she's tough and not bad looking. I mean, she's probably got that ability because, you know, this is Loth, the mighty spider queen. The, you know, the great elven god, dark elf goddess of the spiders. It's just, it's a good miniature. I definitely recommend it. If you guys can get this, especially if you find it on sale, this is a five star. For once, it's a five star. The price, like I said, could be better, but for what you're getting, you're getting a great goddess miniature. It's painted well. It is accurate to having this gargantuan base. Yes, we're having a little bit of a tightly compacted loath, not a open legged, high rising loath, but hey, I'll take what I can get. I mean, would I have made her better? You know what? The only thing that could have is that they added some like rocks and stuff to her base and made her like, like it looked like she was crawling around on them. That'd be kind of cool. And more like spider minions on there, like on the rocks, crawling around with some webs and stuff. That would have made this thing way better because she'd be a more sprawled out over the rocks and stuff. And she'd be showing off more of her impressive bulk. But she's pretty cool. I do like this miniature. I really do. I just gotta say, I really like Loth. She was well executed. She came out great. And in the end, a lovely miniature. So anyway, guys, if you got this far in the video, I thank you very much. And if you would like, please do spider stab and that like button. And make sure you hit the subscribe button, guys. Help the channel grow more. And that way you're not missing out on content. Make sure you put the bell to all so you're not missing out. Also, guys, do tune in for our Dungeons & Dragons podcast, the Dice & Dummies. We are currently 5th edition. We don't know if we'll switch to 1 yet. We'll see how these new 1 rules work. We might do a trial in between our episodes and see how it works. We're not sure yet. We're going to take a little uh, look at it as a group and see if it's worth jumping over yet. Or if we'll just kind of maybe adopt one and then immediately smash it up with our own rule additions like we did with 5th. Which, we didn't do too many, but still some. And, uh, you know, and go from there. We'll find out. But we are getting close to the end of Season 2 as the time of this recording. Guys, do tune in. Dice and Dummies. Remember, it's awesome. Subscribe there too, guys. We are going to hopefully start live streaming. We're hoping to like get live stream so if you guys want you can watch live which you won't miss out on any content so like anything that we might have accidentally said that you might not have seen well watch it live and you'll get to see it versus the edited version of it if we decide to edit we're not sure yet like i said things are in the change but anyway guys join our discord we have a discord for it as well as my discord we can talk about miniatures tabletop war games all that good stuff go there guys you want to talk about mini painting ideals paint schemes Go for it. I will talk to you. I love to do that. I am I will totally nerd out with you on that stuff. And guys, check out my Twitter. There's another place where I launch uh, videos, links to these videos on YouTube. Um, if you don't happen to see them there, you can always check my Twitter for it. Follow me on Twitter where I post like new printed stuff and painted stuff. And uh, anyway, I think that's everything, guys. I've said it all. So anyway, guys, have a great one. I hope to see you next time. And bye-bye.